The latest mini portable from JBL is here. Meet the JBL Go 4, featuring a refreshed design, improved sound performance, and added functionality over its predecessor. But is this the right choice for your next trip? Let's find out. Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds, and yes, we will be heading back to the beach in a minute. But before we do, some context. Now this is the JBL Go 4, and it's the latest portable speaker offering from JBL, replacing the Go 3 that was released a few years back. Now this new generation comes in at $39.99, which is about 10 pounds more than the Go 3, which is, at the time of filming, still available to buy for 29 quid. But this should be a decent step up, offering an updated design, longer seven hour battery life, new app functionality, an adjustable EQ, all new AuraCast on board, and hopefully a step up in sound performance. Now I'll put it to the test and see just how much of an upgrade it really is, but I'm also keen to see how it compares with JBL's other mini portable option, the Clip 4, and to see just how well it stacks up against a similarly priced model in this category, the Sony SRS XB100. Of course, any other comparisons that you guys want to see, make sure you get down in the comments and let me know. Now I know that some of you guys are just here for the sound performance alone, so please feel free to skip ahead using the chapters below. But small teaser, there's not an awful lot in it between these speakers sound quality wise. So I think that a lot of the decisions will be made between the design, the form factor and features. So I'm gonna cover those first. Design-wise, on first impressions, the Go 4 is pretty similar to its predecessor, but I do like what JBL have done with this new upgrade. The logo pops off more now, and the slight shift in sizing makes this feel a little bit more ergonomic in my hand. It's wrapped in this nice hardware and fabric and benefits from plastic rubber accents. Now, it's worth noting here that the Go 4 uses post-consumer recycled plastic and fabric, and even the packaging it comes in is made using paper-printed soy ink, so it's a really nice tick in the sustainability box. Now, owners of the Go 3 will know all too well that after prolonged use, the plastic strips on the base could begin to come away from the speaker. So it's nice to see that they've changed the design here and it looks like it will be much more durable as a result. Now they've also refreshed this little curry loop, which again feels more durable. Oh, and it also comes in a wide range of new colors, which are all quite cool. The purple one in particular looks pretty different. So what else then? Well, we've got our iconic JBL volume and play pause controls along the top with our USB-C charging port on one side and the power, Bluetooth, and AuraCast buttons on the other side. The latter I'll come back to later in the video. Now, if I take a closer look at our other portables that we've got here, I think the Go 4 offers a more rugged feel than the Clip 4, which is also the slightly larger mini portable option of the two. Now this has the same older design as the Go 3, so it's not quite as durable feeling, and you'll notice that this has suffered a little bit of damage from some previous durability tests. Now we've obviously got this metal band here that covers the entire outer edge of the speaker. The one thing that has always annoyed me about the design of the speaker is that you have to lay it flat or have it hooked on something. It can't stand up on its own but you can of course hook it to anything you like. Taking the Sony XB100 as another option then, we've got a cylindrical design with controls around the bottom. And in my opinion, this is a nice premium feeling speaker made up of plastic with a metal grill on top and removable carry strap. Though I don't think it feels quite as durable as the JBL options. So that just about covers how the speakers look, but what else do we need to know? Well, I think it's really important that we put them to the test in the environment that they're designed to be used in, which is out and about and on the go. Let's start by talking about durability then, because for me, any decent portable speaker is not only able to withstand the elements, but also any knocks and drops. So for context, the Go 4 has an IP67 rating, as do all of the other speakers I have here, so we should have no worries with them enduring the elements, but I am really interested to see how its more durable exterior holds up when put to the test. First of all, the Go 3 and Go 4, as expected, performed really well. There's basically no signs of any cosmetic damage whatsoever, so really impressed with those. But the same can't be said for the Clip 4 or the XB100. Now, the Clip 4 did sustain some damage to the metal band that goes around it, which was to be expected, and it's done that in previous drop tests, but the XB100 came off worse. So not only did we have some damage to the metal grill of the XB100, but also to the plastic that wrapped around it as well. So overall, definitely the Go 3 and the Go 4 have performed the best in this test. There's not really much to choose between them, to be honest, but the XB100 has definitely suffered the most damage. Now, of course, all of this damage is purely cosmetic and they all work absolutely fine. 
Now, another important feature to take into consideration is of course battery life, because when you're out and about and head into the beach like I am right now, you are gonna want something that'll last for a decent amount of time. Now the JBL Go 4 comes with a seven hour battery life from a three hour recharge time, but this can be extended to nine hours if you turn on the playtime boost functionality. However, I would be a little bit cautious using this because it does affect the sound performance taken from the low end and boost in the mids, the highs and the vocals. Now, whether you decide to use this feature or not really will come down to personal preference. So I definitely recommend recommend trying it out and see how you guys get on with it but for me I see it more as a kind of last resort feature. Now the previous generation Go 3 offered a maximum playtime of just five hours so I'd argue that the extra battery on the Go 4 is a nice little upgrade. The Clip 4 by comparison offers 10 hours so just over the maximum nine hours battery of the Go 4 but the clear winner is the XB100 with a very solid 16 hour battery life which from a mini portable speaker is pretty impressive. Now in terms of connectivity, the JBL Go 4 comes with Bluetooth 5.3, whereas the Go 3 comes with Bluetooth 5.1. But don't forget, we have also got that all new AuraCast on board. It does look like JBL are replacing their party boost features from previous generations, which would let you connect up multiple JBL speakers with AuraCast. Now don't worry, new speakers like the Go 4 and the Extreme 4 can still be paired with other JBL speakers featuring party boost and you can also connect two Go 4s together to create a stereo sound. By comparison, the older Go 3 and the Clip 4 don't feature AuraCast or Party Boost, so they cannot be paired with any other JBL speakers. The XB100 obviously doesn't feature JBL's Party Boost or AuraCast, but it does offer Bluetooth 5.3, and it works with Google Fast Pair with Android devices to get set up nice and quickly, and you can stereo pair them together if you have two. Oh, and before I forget to mention, it's also the only one out of the four with a built-in microphone, so it can also be used as a speakerphone, so nice bit of added functionality there. Right, on to one of the most important factors here then, the sound quality. Now, I'm not expecting a huge difference in sound performance with the Go 4 in comparison to the Go 3, but from diving into the specs, while the Go 4 offers the same output power of 4.2 watts, I've also found that it has a larger 1.75 inch transducer compared with a 1.5 inch transducer. And as a result, according to JBL, the Go 4 offers a more powerful sound that can go 20% louder in comparison to its predecessor and offers 10% punchier bass. So overall, I am expecting an improved sound performance from this newer version. Now, another key thing to highlight here is that this new version is compatible with the JBL app, which the Go 3 and Clip 4 aren't. So let's hop into the app and take a quick look. Okay, so we've got a few sound presets here at the top, including JBL Signature, Chill, Energize and Vocal, or we can tap Custom here to adjust the EQ ourselves, which is great. Now just below, we can see that Playtime Boost toggle for up in the battery life, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and here is where you can set up a stereo pair. Now there is a Sony companion app, which is a lot more basic, and it won't let you adjust the EQ, but you can adjust the volume, check battery life, and add your music into the music library if you want. So that's what the specs say, but how do they sound? Well, it's time to leave the beach and this beach house and head back to the studio and test these out. Now, a quick disclaimer, as always, that what you hear over YouTube won't be exactly what I can hear in our studio, but it should give you some idea as to how these speakers sound. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little demo. Now we do have to remember that we're talking about mini portable speakers here. So none of these are gonna offer groundbreaking levels of sound performance, but which stood out to me? Well, I think that's the point. 
I'm not sure that any really offered a considerably better performance than the others. The Go 4 in testing does offer an improved sound profile over the Go 3 with slightly better weight in the low end. Compared with the Clip 4, spec-wise, it does offer a higher output power of 5 watts, but it has a smaller 1.5 inch transducer and a frequency response of 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz. But from testing, there's really not a lot between these two speakers. The only thing I may have noticed was that the Clip 4 gives a slightly more open sound with vocals coming through a little bit cleaner, so a better performance in the middle range. Now our final speaker, the Sony XB100, boasts a 2 watt driver with a frequency range of 100 hertz to 15 kilohertz. Now personally, I thought that this actually offered the best bass performance of the group ever so slightly, which I'm putting down to Sony's passive bass radiator, which works with the upwards firing driver to boost the bass. However, it didn't really match the others in terms of power and volume, so this wouldn't be my pick of the bunch if you're looking for the biggest sound for your money. But I don't think that there really is enough difference in the sound performances when testing these in a real world setting to be able to make your choice based on sound alone. Which is where the design, form factor and additional features play a big role in helping you pick the right speaker for you. So where does that leave us then? Well, I think it's fair to say that the Go 4 is a good upgrade on its predecessor. It's not suddenly offering 50% better sound performance, but there is an upgrade in that department and the added battery, access to the JBL app, AuraCast, stereo pair options, and a more ergonomic design all adds up for a very decent portable speaker. For me, it's the one that I would gravitate to first out of these four options and would be my personal preference style-wise. I can see why people might go for the Clip 4 if you'd make use of the design, and I'm interested to see how the upcoming Clip 5 due sometime this year stacks up when that's released. Now, I can also see why the XB100 is popular. The battery life alone is a great plus, and it's a decent little speaker to take out on the go. But for me, it's the go for that takes the win today. As always, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.